Okay, so I'm, I'm ready to start. So I'm Jean-Baptiste Mardel, I'm the maintainer of Kdin Live, the video editing application using uh, the KDE environment. And my talk is about rewriting the timeline. So <coughs> first I'm, I'm gonna give you some background information on why we had to, to rewrite the timeline and um, what, we, what we did this, this year in 2017. So <laughs> the KDN Live project started around 2005 and this was the, um, the first <laughs> KD3 release. Um, so it was a very ba basic application at that time. Then in 2008 was the first uh, KD port. So we, we switched to the KD4 uh, uh, libraries. In 2010, um, New, new contributors came in. Before, it was mostly, mostly me. And we, are, we added new, <coughs> new features, uh, like uh, stop motion widget, color scopes, and, um, and uh, many new features ca came in that, uh, that year. <coughs> then in 2011, um, we came closer to the KD community. Uh, I went to the first to my first Renda meeting where KD developers meet, and we switched the, the code from SourceForge to, to the KD servers. In 2007, um, there was a first rewrite re attempt because, uh, as you can see on the on the image, uh, the code was just piling up and becoming a, <coughs> a bit difficult to manage. In 2013, uh, the project uh, had a big growth, so it became um, more and more complex to, to manage. In 2014, um, there was a first discussions about uh, rewriting part of, of Kdin Live because it, it became so complex uh, that it was hard to to manage, and that same year we started to port to KDE Frameworks 5. <coughs> in 2015, uh, we released the, for, the first uh, KDE, K, KDE Frameworks 5 uh, version. Uh, we also had a, a first uh, UI review um, with the KDE VGG group. And we started another very important thing for the community, the Kdin Live Cafe. So we, we started in December 2015, a monthly cafe, uh, IRC cafe, uh, where users and developers meet. And ever since that, every month we, have, we had this, uh, this cafe. <coughs> so that was uh, 2015. 2016, uh, we focused on, on the community. We had some new people uh, coming in. We redesigned the website. Um, we tried to also to refocus um, on our target user group. Oops, sorry. Um, <laughs> to have, um, um, because we, we wanted to make Caden Live useful for professional or semi-professional video editors. So we try to, to refocus on this and to really try to listen to our target users to improve the application. And also in the, in the years before, we added lots of stuff, kind of we were trying to, to do everything in one application. So we, we in 2016, we refocused to try to do video editing only, but try to do it uh, uh, good. And so, <laughs> in 2017, uh, f almost five years after thinking about uh, rewriting uh, p uh, large parts of KDN Live, we finally uh, started this big, big rewrite. <clears throat> okay. Because uh, it became obvious that if we wanted to add new features to, to also to, 
to make uh, advanced features uh, usable for professional editors, it was impossible to continue like this. Uh, adding new features only meant that we added new bugs and it was unfixable. Okay. So, So the first refactoring attempt in 2014 was mostly unsuccessful because um, uh, we tried to rewrite s separate code and it was later we, we realized it was almost impossible to, mer to merge the, the, um, the refactoring. So um, in 2017 um, we had uh, the big chance of having a new developer who stepped in who is, really, who is uh, interested in code archi architecture. So he did a lot of code cleanup and uh, completely uh, redesigned the, the architecture to make it better. So if we have a quick look at before the refactoring, uh, I'm going to show you, so the, um, the circles show you the files that constitute the uh, KDN Lab timeline. So we had a custom track view class, depending on another class, another class, and it was all a big, uh, a big mix. So it was, uh, very hard to change something without breaking other parts. And also, in yellow, you have the, the UI uh, parts, and in blue, the, the core library parts. <coughs> and you can see that it was very mixed up. So it was very uh, problematic to, to make a change. And this was the timeline, and there is also uh, the, the project bin, uh, the FX stack, and the monitor stuff, and all that was completely uh, mixed up. So we were, we were really blocked and for a long time we postponed this, uh, this rewrite because it was a really not fun thing to, to do. So now, in, in, uh, as of today, the timeline looks a bit like this. So it's uh, rather simplified, but you can see that uh, there are much less uh, interdependencies and the UI code in, in yellow is, is um, <laughs> much uh, nicely uh, separated from the, um, from the other parts of the code. So, for this refactoring, first thing was that we redesigned the architecture and also we switched the, the code responsible for the, the KDN Live timeline to QML. So this also helped us as we switched to a model view um, structure, this also helped us to, to better separate uh, parts of the, of the code. So. Then you can see a, a quick uh, comparison of uh, uh, what it was in January and what it is in, in July. So it was, uh, uh, it's, it's simplified, but it was uh, really uh, a huge work that we, that we did. So now, um, in, in this switch to QML, um, I'm going to show you, um, we switched several parts of the, of the UI, but not the whole application. So currently, uh, KDN Live is a mixed application. We have uh, parts with Q widgets and parts with, with QML. Uh, mostly because it, it's, as it's a quite complex application, um, I don't think it would be uh, completely <coughs> feasible, feasible to, to completely switch to QML. So currently, we are, we're, we're doing what we think is, is, is best for the, the application. So you see in highlighted in red are the parts that now use QML. So the effect list is uh, using QML. The monitor view is also using a QML overlay. And now <coughs> the timeline is uh, composed of QML. Okay, now um, I'm going to show you a quick uh, demonstration, video demonstration of the timeline in, in action. Oh, no. Sorry, just before, um, one of the advantage of switching to QML is that the, the display code for the timeline is completely separated in some QML files, if some of you have already used it. So it's kind of JavaScript. You can easily customize the look of the timeline. So just by editing a few lines of the, of the UI, you can have a completely different look. <laughs> so this is just what I, I did yesterday night in a, in a few um, in, in my spare time to, to test. 
but it also means that in, in some future we might be able to, to move to, for example, um, uh, touch UI or things like this. Okay, and after this I'm going to show you a, a quick video demonstration of the, of the timeline. So this is a, the new version using QML. So basically for those of you who have used uh, KDN Live, you won't notice uh, much changes. So <laughs> this was um, the first, one of the first goal was to uh, try to get uh, same, same features in, in, the new, in the new code. So you will see, uh, I, I will highlight you a few of the changes, but it's not completely uh, uh, different. Uh, now that we're reaching a, uh, an almost stable status, we also want to, to involve users in, in parts of uh, uh, changing the UI to improve the, the, the workflow. Okay, so uh, you can drag a clip in the timeline uh, as, it was, as it was before. You can resize the clip and you can see on the right Side, uh, uh, side. So there's a small uh, info uh, displaying the, um, the length of the, of, the, of the size change. So QML allows us to, to add more um, interactive uh, cues to the, to the timeline. You can mute, uh, hide video, or uh, lock, lock the, the tracks. Uh, all of this was possible before, but now the, the look is a bit nicer and you have some feedback. If you try to click on lock track, the lock icon also pulses. Uh, one of the <coughs> sorry, um, uh, new feature also is that you can resize tracks, which was not possible before in the, in the QGraphics view uh, interface. And you can uh, compact or expand the, the video tracks. And last is uh, the video fades that can be adjusted. Um, uh, it's quite similar to what it was before, but um, it will allow us to, to have a better customization of the, of the UI. Okay, so, um, okay. Now, the, one of the problem we've been um, having in KDN Live as in other applications is that we depend on a lot of libraries that are usually not um, easily available on, on these tools, or they have some, <coughs> some older versions. Um, so uh, we, we really, we're trying to use, uh, I, I heard it uh, in several talks today already, uh, to switch to some containerized uh, formats like uh, AppImage. <coughs> and we are currently setting, setting up uh, KD uh, CI um, instance to, be, to build uh, app images of KD Live of the development version, so that users can then uh, get the nightly builds of the of the uh, of the last version as an app image to easily test the, the latest changes. So hopefully, this uh, this app image CI should be uh, working in about uh, two or three or three weeks. So we hope we have um, uh, many users that follow uh, closely the development of Kaden Live, so it will uh, allow them to, to improve testing and have us uh, so that we can have some better feedback. Uh, and in September, I'm also going to attend the Renda, and uh, I'm hoping to push also for the flat pack and snap uh, formats. So now, what, what uh, this, ref this refactoring will imply for users? One of the most important things that users want is stability. So, uh, one part of the code uh, architect ar architectural change is that we separated the, the, um, the libraries of the UI, and Nicolas Carion, who is working on this refactoring, uh, added some tests and also used some fuzzing so that we can uh, make sure, uh, better than before, that uh, there are no regressions in the code. So it should be, um, it's one of, the, one of the core motivation for this refactoring was to get an improved stability.
Then one, one thing that, um, that we wanted to achieve is advanced video editing. As I, I, I mentioned, our target user group is uh, professional or semi-professional video editors. And uh, uh, for this, you need some advanced editing uh, functions, a bit like um, what you have in text editors, like overwrite mode or things like this. So uh, I just uh, illustrate a few of the features that we plan to introduce that were partly uh, added before in KDN Live, but were so too buggy because um, of the um, structure of the code. So for example, if you have a video of a cat and want to add a chicken in, in between, uh, <coughs> with advanced editing, you can just move the clip uh, over the, the, the other video and it will just um, work. You don't have to cut uh, the start, cut the end, delete, and uh, then add it. Okay. One other thing, if you have a, a clip that is a bit too, too long, you want to cut a part. You don't have to also select the start, select the end, and cut. You can just, <coughs> uh, in one shortcut, uh, resize it. We're also um, working on the transition workflow. Currently, currently in KDN Live, if you want to make a transition between two clips, you have to put one clip on top of the other, then add a transition, and then the transition will take place. In the, in the new workflow, um, it's called a, a feature called same track transition that most uh, many professional editors have. You just overlap the two, the two clips and the transition will uh, take place uh, on the overlap, overlap lengths. So the, yeah, these features are really uh, necessary for some professional video editors. We're also planning to work on the effects workflow. Currently, if you want to add, add a clip, an effect to a clip in Caden Live, you have to search the effect list, find the effect you want, and then drag the effect on the clip. Then you have the effect stack show, showing up, and you can adjust um, the effect. So it, it requires quite a lot of steps, especially because we have lots of effects in Caden Live. So in the new <coughs> version that we are, we are building, you will have a built-in effect stack with the most popular uh, often used options like uh, contrast or uh, color balance, and you can directly uh, adjust it without having to search in, the, in, in an effect list. And I think the yeah, last uh, uh, feature I want to show is sequence nesting. So if you have Oh, sorry. If you have a sequence of several clips that, that you want to use and you, you like, you can kind of compact it to make it one clip. And uh, then you can add effects to this, uh, cut it, uh, resize it, and then expand it again. Um, so, yeah, kind of useful feature. So, um, since, uh, uh, as I mentioned, since about two years, we also really refocused on the community. We have these monthly uh, KDN Live cafes where we discuss uh, the features that we are implementing. Because um, KDN Live is also made by, by a lot of people. There is uh, Massimo, who is a, a professional editor, who is giving us feedback on how to implement features, how, how as they work in other video editing softwares, and uh, how we can implement it in our own way. We have uh, Farid, who, is, uh, who did um, um, last year a new logo, a new website, and who is managing communication. So we are trying also to, to improve our communication to the medias and to, the, to our users. And we have also Harald, uh, who has been doing some great tutorials in, in KDN Live. Oops. Okay. So, um, one more thing about this refactoring is that we plan to release it uh, as KDN Live uh, uh, 
1712, so in, in December this year. So with the um, introduction of, this, of the app image automation, uh, we, hope to, we hope to have a good uh, testing period between um, September and December to, to debug and, um, and improve the, the application. Uh, okay, so I, I think I, I said uh, most of the things I, I had to, I wanted to, to put in this uh, presentation. I don't know if uh, any of you have uh, questions or you can otherwise uh, always come, come by me later. Can you mention a few things that Kidding Life is planning to implement one year down the line? It's in 2018 is the next year. So <laughs> what's going 2018 going to look like for Kidding Life? Uh, okay, yeah, so for a longer time, uh, I think uh, some of the features I, I, I showed in, in the presentation uh, maybe won't make it uh, for the um, end of year release. So for example, I think um, uh, nest, nested uh, sequences uh, probably won't make it uh, and will be for, for next year. Uh, otherwise, uh, features that have been requested uh, that we plan to implement later uh, are, for example, um, improved audio workflow with an uh, audio mixer to, to allow better uh, adjusting of audio. Um, uh, well, we have a very long list of, uh, of, of wanted features. It's, um, I'm a bit cautious because I, uh, we started the refactoring in, in January, and first I, I thought we would make it uh, for Kaden Live um, 1708. Uh, uh, so I, I thought we would be ready in uh, August, and uh, um, we realized that it would be impossible. So it always takes a, a bit longer than we than we think. Also, it will depend on on uh, if a new developer stepped in or or, or not. Um, yeah, most one of the thing we want is also. Uh, to have a, um, another a UI review uh, to adjust uh, the workflow so that it, it, it really fits uh, our users' needs. Any more questions? Uh, hello. Uh, well done on what, what is really a flagship application of KDE, and I think should get a lot more coverage than it does. I have some silly questions, one of which is, where are the tutorials that you mentioned? One is, why the dark theme? Why do artists somehow like to have everything black? And another one is, why the silly name, or what does, that, what does the name mean? <laughs> okay. So for the, the dark team, uh, it was a very frequent request from, from users. Uh, it appears that most uh, video editors, most, most photo editors uh, use dark teams to, to work on image because it, uh, uh, that way the interface um, uh, gets less in the way of the image. So it was a very uh, much requested feature. But this can be, uh, it's configurable, so you can switch t back to the default uh, desktop team if you want. And for the silly name uh, question, uh, I'm not responsible for it because I, I, I started, when I started to, can, to get imply, um, implied, uh, the name was already given. Um, so I don't really know the, the, the origin of this, of this name, but I know it's really hard to, to pronounce, uh, at least in French, uh, people really uh, never know how to pronounce it. Uh, and now I, yeah, we have the website and all, so it's a bit complicated to change the name uh, now. <laughs> the tutorials? Oh, uh, on the website, uh, you have a toolbox section, sorry, um, a toolbox section uh, where you can find uh, the tutorials. Uh, are you aware that uh, on OpenSUSE uh, um, Tumbleweed Cutting Life isn't working at the moment? Uh, no, I, I have not followed. Um, yeah. 
something to do with some new libraries that have been installed with KDE or something like that, and it's not working at all? It doesn't work at all? No. Um, from the official repository? From the official yeah. repository. Yeah. Oh, no, I, w I was not aware of it, so... <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we, we try, we're hoping to, to push this containerized format to, so that at least users can test if, it, if, mm -hmm. if there is a way to make it work on their system and then uh, go back to the, to the distribution to, to, to tell them that uh, the app should be working. So I think it's, uh, the best we can do is to, to have those... Um... No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I understand that, so I think, uh, yeah, it has to be um, communicated to the, the man package maintainers, so I, we don't really have a, yeah. So. I have just one last question. It's yeah. about uh, the time you took for the complex uh, simplification of the model. How many people were involved in this effort? Because it, it looks very, it started from a very complex model and then you came up very easy, with a very simple model. It looks very nice. It's a great effort. Yes, uh, so how, how many people worked on it? <laughs> it's always a, um, um, Sometimes surprising because we are, we're only very few people, so we are mostly two people. Uh, mostly Nicola Carion, who's um, uh, done the architectural overhaul, and I helped him to, to, to work on it. So it was very, very intense work for, for, for several months. I hope there are no more questions. Thanks, John Baptist.